Hello and welcome back to the Django RM series part seven. So now we're going to have focus on raw queries. So simply put, the raw method in Django allows us to take or build SQL queries and execute them. So it's worth noting that this isn't the only way of running SQL queries in Django instead of utilizing the default ORM setup. Here we can also, if we want to bypass the ORM and just run SQL queries. So we'll talk about that in a, in a later tutorial. But why I mention that is because the model manager raw method um, should generally be your first option when you want to execute raw SQL queries. Now, the reason why that might be is because the structure of the raw query set class instance is very similar to what you've been working with the query set class instance. So in that respect, it's good to kind of build up towards um, maybe bypassing the ORM by learning a little bit about the raw method here before maybe going ahead and just bypassing, like I keep saying, the ORM completely. So as I've kind of dropped in, what gets returned from a raw method is a raw query set. So previously we've been working with query sets. That's what gets returned. So with raw, we have raw query sets. And again, like I've alluded to, the raw query set is like the query set in that we can access the data in a similar way and also perform other actions such as indexing and slicing. So let's start off with a really uh, simple example. Let me just drop this down a bit. So it starts off with a really simple example. Uh, let's go ahead and utilize the same function as before. So we use the same data set, the simple data set we've been utilizing, which was the student data set. So we just had a little bit of data in our table. So let's start off with the equivalent. So you're probably already familiar now with something like this. So we've got a a student, so we take all the data from the student table, um, objects dot all. So this is going to return all the student data from this table table here. Okay, so we're familiar with that. So this is obviously utilizing the ORM. That's going to be translated as we've been looking at into SQL. Um, so let's have a look at that. Let's just go through the process and have a look at that so we can then compare. So here I'm going to print the outcome um, and then also utilize qu connection query. So that will output the SQL and some performance measurements. So let's go ahead and do that. So I am using a template, so I just need to refresh that. You can see that it outputted all the data. And then down here, um, you can see that we have the query data, the query set, as I've described it, and then the SQL query. So select um, all from the table and then we got the time it took to execute okay so that's the sql query right there for anyone wondering why i'm refreshing a page and not maybe utilizing the console it's worth noting that you could also run these codes or run this code sorry <clears throat> in the in the console or the terminal here if you wanted to i just run them here so it just makes it easier to um, save and see and run so i have set up the urls and the views if you're not familiar to this tutorial series. So this code is available in the description. So let's go ahead now and run an equivalent. So we're just going to uh, block that out. Um, so let's go ahead and now create a equivalent using raw. So again, we, we use posts. Um, this is going to equal student again, and then we use objects. And this time we select raw. Oh, raw. There we go. So now what we need to do is actually run the SQL query. So the equivalent query here. So this is where it comes in useful, understanding a little bit of SQL, of course. So we're going to run select. It doesn't have to be upper um, case, of course. Um, so if you're not too sure, well, we've got the SQL query right here in actual fact. So we could probably just copy it out from here, uh, wherever it was. I move this up. Here we go. So this was the SQL query. So select. Now I don't need to select all these individual items. What I can say um, using SQL is the all. So I can use the star to select all the, the table fields. And then I need a from. So that's the next component. From 
and then I need to define what table. Now you can see the table has been defined here by a student underscore student. So what that is, is the name of the app and then in the model, the name of the actual table. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So from student underscore student. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if that works. So I'll get back into my template here, I refresh, and you can see that we're returning these items here. So let's just double check we're doing the right thing. Um, let's just see if we can break it. There we go. Uh, so we put it back. And there we go. So we're returning three items, all the data from the database. And there we have it. So that's running a, a simple select statement. So let's go ahead and just um, expand this slightly and just select some individual items possibly. Okay, so let's just use a natural, let's just use a where and then maybe age equals 21. So let's go back into our table. So we should receive one item or return one row here. Um, which is this one here. So let's go ahead and just save that and refresh. And there we go. So you can see the SQL working um, and then potentially how this works and how you can now kind of inject your SQL into the Django raw function here so that we can perform actions on the database. So maybe at this point, I'm not showing you the whole picture at this point. You can clearly see that I'm selecting data if I go into my template, you can see that I'm looping through that data and the data is being shown. But if I were just to comment this out, what's important to understand here, for example, um, so I'm just comment that out. I'm just going to run the data so we can see what data is actually being returned. Now you can see here in my terminal, I'm actually printing out the data that's re been returned and you can see that there's nothing there. So let's uh, refresh and you can see um, what is returned is this raw query set and it just says select all from student student where age equals 21. So that's what's being returned uh, from performing this. So that's being saved inside of this variable here and we're just printing it out essentially. That's what's happening. So the student object returned by this query will be deferred modeled instances. So the deferred model instances. So let's have a look at the Django documentation. So in fact, there isn't too much direct information here I can point you towards at this point, but have a look through the model instant reference and have a read through that. That's gonna give you some information about a deferred model. So essentially what this is then in terms of deferred model instances, this means that the fields that are omitted from the query will be loaded on demand. So at the moment, I've kind of baked this idea of deferred model instances as or meaning that the fields are omitted from the query um, until we actually load them on demand. So we saw previously in our output that we demanded them, we outputted or we looped them out to the screen and that was okay. And we've also seen that by just outputting them, it doesn't actually show any data. So we need to specify what data we want to kind of output here. So we can do that also, or just uh, simulate that here utilizing this for loop. So for S in student blah, and we're just going to print. So every time there's an item returned, um, that's just going to print it out. So if we were to run this again, very crudely, um, and then look into the console, cause we're printing this out, you can see that we're actually returning the three names from the table. So working in this manner actually gives us some powerful tools to consider because we're not just outputting the data here. We can then go ahead and, for example, use something, for example, like mapping, where we can actually then map the data that's returned from the data over to some sort of naming convention. And that can be a really useful tool to have. So mapping is something a little bit more advanced, which we'll talk about in a, a tutorial later on. Uh, so let's just go with the basics here that we've created a very simple raw uh, function here utilizing the SQL statement, select all from students. Obviously you can change and play around with this if you're familiar with SQL. So we 
hopefully understand the kind of the basic principle here that we're utilizing deferred model instances. So we need to actually uh, load the data on demand. So I gave you that example. If I just save this again, if we go back into the output here. You can see that I'm demanding or I'm requesting the first name and the age. I'm just kind of looping that out through that through the data and remove that. And then we can go back into the template and you can see that this is what I'm actually presenting or printing onto the screen. So if you're working with long SQL queries, you might want to bring in the SQL query as a variable. So you can go ahead and maybe do something like this, uh, SQL equals, uh, and then the, the query. So let's just run the query here. And then you can just bring in the SQL right here, for example. That just allows you to kind of break things up a little bit. Um, so that would run exactly the same, one would assume. So let's go back into here, just make sure that's working. We refresh and there we go. So that just outputs exactly the same. So as I alluded to at the start of this tutorial, you can go ahead now and utilize some of the other tools that we have available. For example, here, the limiting the query set, we can limit the amount of objects that return. So here, I've just gone ahead after the raw function here, I've utilized this, I've limited it to two rows. So let's go ahead and have a look at that. And it's just returning the two rows, for example. So it's worth reading through this, um, this limiting query set uh, documentation or making queries, sorry. And this just give you some more examples of how you can manipulate and change and the functions that you can include generally with query sets. Okay, so maybe a little bit limiting, but hopefully you got the general overview now of utilizing raw queries or how you might go ahead and start to utilize SQL within your applications instead of utilizing the RM parameters that we would normally use. Okay, so thank you very much for listening. If there's any comments or queries, then please leave them in the comments section and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.